All right, what up YouTube? Welcome back to the Fluxathon. Video number 10 or 11, not really sure. We're getting, I'm getting them all mixed up now. We got so many of these. So special shout out to Dan and the Flux Army. In today's video, we are going to do a deep dive into inflation. How bad do you guys think inflation is going to hit the crypto market? Do you think it's going to be something that people just start to wake up really quick and everybody starts running into the crypto market? Here's a better question. Right now we see the people at USDC packed, Sam Bankman Freed testifying at Congress. We see them trying to incentivize like the government saying that you guys need to buy USDC. That's what people should be doing. If they want the dollar to remain the dominant currency, they need to back a stable coin like USDC. Here's my thing, right? If we go down that rabbit hole, what is stopping our government from printing fake money out of thin air like they have been this entire time, going to a coin exchange like Coinbase and buying USDC? In my personal opinion, you should only use USDT and USDC at an absolute last resort, worst case scenario. UST is Luna's stablecoin. It is an algorithmic stablecoin, so it's not pegged to any US dollar. It's not backed by any US dollar. It is nothing, right? but an algorithm. So when the price of the coin gets above dollar, you can burn Luna and you get to keep the extra. If the price goes below a dollar, you can burn the stables and get back Luna and keep the extra. So it's really awesome. If you guys haven't saw my deep dive earlier with Dan, where we actually talk about stable coins, check it out. And let me know what you guys think. Drop some comments below, guys. I all wanna hear you guys' feedback on these videos because if you guys really like this style of video, I will keep them coming. But I don't, I can't tell by the live chats because they always disappear and I, and I can't analyze those after the fact. So definitely make sure you guys are dropping your comments on the main comments down below like after this video ends, not because you see me in the live chat and the premiere or whatever. Those, I'm just trying to chat and BS with you guys. But we're gonna dive deep into it today, guys. But you guys gotta do me a favor. Don't forget, I'm not a financial advisor. I do not give investing advice. I do not advise that you buy, sell, trade, or hodl any cryptocurrency. You always need to consult with your own financial advisor before making any investing decisions. With that being said, Let's start with like a three year play, like by the next Bitcoin having June of 2024, whenever. I think what you're going to see is people are going to get tired of VCs and large institutions. It's why crypto and blockchain was born. Mm -hmm. We got the shit of the way the system was being manipulated. Yeah, we got shit on. And if you keep repeating the same thing and call it a different name, it's still the same byproduct, right? Right. So, you like know, why, why isn't that, the government already having a CBDC out? Why isn't U.S. digital dollars a thing already and it's 100 percent transparent? Because they know if they switched right now, they, people would freak out if they knew what the government was actually doing with that money. Right. If they yeah. actually understood. Like, I mean, think about if you turned U.S. dollars right now into a cryptocurrency and you invested in with a three trillion, however many 28 trillion coins out, dollar bills out in circulation. Right. How ticked off would you be every time the government turned that printer back on? Yeah. You would be irate. But the fact that it's yeah. not transparent and they What's the difference if we're 28 trillion or 30 trillion in debt? You know, like that's kind of how people are looking at it and they can't stop printing right now. So we are absolutely, well, I don't Yeah, know. and I think that there, uh, uh, it wasn't transparent. The Fed wasn't transparent. And I and the Fed, I said, I allude to the Fed because that's stateside, but really globally, they're all working together, right? And there wasn't much in the way of transparency to the end users. So they didn't really know the impact of what they were doing until recently flip the game on that because they had to immediately infuse a large amount of mm -hmm. cash into the economy to keep it from collapsing right? It's, yep. I mean, for all intents of its purposes, it's the perfect Ponzi scheme, right? The problem is we're seeing the effects today. So the regular guy or gal that goes out there and they have a job and they're now making $15 an hour, but a roast that they used to buy for $5 is now $11. All of it's irrelevant. We're slowly educating because of this quantitative e easing and because of these policies, we're slowly educating people who had no idea what QE was, that it has an economy. And, and the way Way that we're educating them is they have they make more money but they have to spend more money to be able to get the same products they got when they made less and the <laughs> items were less right yep so how do i know this is working because my son who doesn't get into finances or anything like that comes to me one day and he's like i got another raise this is like my third raise uh but it just seems like everything is so much more expensive now 
So I set him down and I had the QE talk, right? And at the end of it all, he said, it doesn't even make sense to me that this is legal, right? Because if you look at our country and how our country was established, reproduction or reproducing our monetary uh, dollar bill or our currency, they actually sentenced you to death. Like it was that it was that serious of, of a challenge. We we allow it now at a mass scare, scale, printer go burr, and we're not standing up against that. Like we need to finally, as people say, enough is enough. We are tired of all of this. And when we finally stick together and we start to take that that stand, then you'll start to see action. How you know? far away do you think and how detrimental do you think that that's going to be to the, the actual crypto industry? It feels like we're almost going towards like a, a point where that people's money at, at what the real inflation rate is around 15 to 20 percent right now is so think about I think people need to look at it as far as like in the last year. Were you able to take 20% of your paycheck and put it into a savings account? Do you not? Did I would your, say the did, majority of people know. Right. No. So if you were not 50% of the United States over the last year wasn't able, like even if you got to think about it, if you actually tried and wanted to, would you have been able to save 20% and put it into a savings account? And if you didn't or an investment in something else, whatever, you need to have 20% of your capital put away. If you weren't able to physically do that last year and everything now is 25 to 30% more expensive. You got to figure over the next year at the rate that they are printing, you will get to a point where you don't have any money. You are already living That's paycheck right. to paycheck. It's going to get worse. So yep. do you think that yeah, that I mean, is going to impact the, like is crypto going to hit a point where say Bitcoin hits 55,000 and because the government is printing money so fast and, and things are depreciating that people that aren't already in the crypto space won't be able to enter it because the barrier to entry would be, you have to literally put money in an asset, hope it goes up so you can make more fiat currency to pay your bills. Like people are going to have to move money into crypto hopefully in that month crypto goes up so that they can take it right back out just to pay their bills to live like how do we yeah. see more money come into the crypto space except for you know big big businesses is it like a crypto payroll company that people will start getting paid directly in in crypto or how what if i told you that i don't want your bitcoin i don't want your fiat right mm -hmm. um i think eventually what happens and you've seen this in venezuela and other countries where they they printed so much of their currency that i wouldn't trade one flux for a billion venezuela dollars whatever the equivalent was you know we have this kind of mindset as really just you know finance folks right let's mm -hmm. just say we'll, we'll lump all of the crypto folks into finance folks that's that's what we're looking at we deem success by bitcoin being fifty five thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred fifty thousand dollars your basing a deflationary model with a success link to an inflationary model. So in reality, Bitcoin at $50,000, and as the US dollar continues to keep printing, that it's going to be worth more in fiat, but it'll be less yes. valuable because there's you've produced so much fiat. Yeah, it's like the stock market and right I, now, exactly like the stock market. Yep. Everything's going up. You're getting equity in your in your house, but you can't yep. sell your house and buy something at a better price. You know what I'm saying? Like you're screwed yep. no matter how you look at it. Now, are we going to see? So do you think that that's going to actually negatively impact? I get that. Like I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't. I've never sold. Oh, I did sell Flux one time when I was trapped outside, almost sleeping in my car in Miami because Airbnb ran ten thousand dollars of charges on my credit card and I couldn't spend my own money in my bank. So I had to send. I the only place I had any cash was on crypto was in KuCoin. So I had to send it over to my bank. And long story short, but I would never sell any of my crypto for fiat unless I'm like stranded in, a, in another state and have no way to get any cash or anything like I don't see anybody trading well, money for do you think a better way to look at it would be instead of the value of Bitcoin the amount of money invested in the stable coins would be a better way to monitor the growth of the crypto market well I, I think make no mistake I think we're heading toward a, a global a stable asset I mean I, I truly do I mean uh, the dollars kind of that banner for a very long time and I would say the states probably don't want to give that up because because that's a, uh, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a fiat currency that's backed with the strongest military of all time through threat, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, if you try to devalue our asset, we're going to come after you with a massive army. And that's just really what it is. Like, you know, I love my country, but some of the things that we've done to manipulate the world in terms of our, you know, our economic model, we just keep spending, you know, we just keep spending with no, no goal to reduce the debt right? Yep. So you have no choice. If you're in a group of 20 people, I'll use this analogy. This is a really good analogy, mm -hmm. right? It's like be, being in a car with three drunk people and you're sober and you're in the back seat, right? <laughs> the, and the drunkest guy of them all is driving the car. And you're like, look, I am sober. Let me drive. Let me get out. I'll drive the car. I'll get us there safe. Nope. nope I'm good. I Let's got just this. Sit back. 
you're you're terrified because you're sober and you're watching these things play out right in front of you. And it's the same way with our current economic system. I am not a financial advisor, nor do I play one on TV, right? But I will tell you, these are the things that are about to come. You're going to see equities market start to collapse. There is a housing bubble right now where it's 30 and 40 percent on these ha- the, these houses. That's going to collapse. Mm. The supply chain is thin at best, right? And I think the, the thing that nobody's talking about is the student debt bubble and the subprime car bubble. You know, people have been taking loans out on cars 30, 40, 50 percent. You know, there was I, I saw a Ford Bronco the other day. The sticker price on it was like 65,000. Out the door, they sold it for 105. They had put markup that much on top of it. And banks are rubber stamping that because they want people to be in debt. They want oh, 100%. To, they want people. To. So at some point, there's going to be a moment where there is a correction, right? I think it's CDOs, that, DODs or whatever they yeah, call them. It, yeah, it, it very well could be, right? When that correction comes, people are going to have to figure out another way. And you saw this in Venezuela when their economy collapsed, right? Yeah. Bitcoin is a way of life there right now. That's a difference between you eating and not eating, right? That's a difference between you, you know, having electric and not having electric was yeah. Bitcoin, right? Putting the roof over the family's you're gonna head. See this on a, yeah, I think you're going to see this on a larger scale. And, you know, can this be avoided? Maybe, you know, maybe if, mm-hmm. if our government embraces the technology and starts to move toward a more deflationary model, identifies the facts that we are grossly overspending, tells people to stop what they're doing, you know, and, and get people to a more, I mean, when I grew up, Ryan, my grand mother lived through the depression she would you know all right youtube so that's a wrap if you guys want to see these interviews before i actually launch them or just bits and pieces you know i try to drop some breadcrumbs <laughs> drop some breadcrumbs over there on twitter swing over to twitter at shots by matt i'd be greatly appreciative if you guys could do that for me and i appreciate each and every one of you guys if you guys didn't catch my breaking crypto news video two days ago swing by and check it out i gave you guys a lot of shout outs especially everybody that signed up for my crypto coaching classes you guys mean the world to me i can't thank you guys enough and can't wait to see where Flux is going to take this. So definitely drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about the current status. Do you think the market is going to go more towards decentralized or more towards centralized? I personally am betting on the centralized way. Like I'm definitely stacking K, right? No questions asked to the freaking moon. But I'm not going to be naive enough to just say I'm not playing that game because they're not decentralized. Because I think that a lot of people are going to be chasing the money. So I think it's going to really boil down to who markets and who scales and who innovates the fastest, right? So whatever teams have been marketing really well, and I'm seeing parabolic dumps down right now, I'm packing my bags on them because we got a little taste of what the market's going to look like, right? On these bullish sprints. So if these coins are bullish and they're delivering and they're developing, check out GitHub's, right? Hopefully we can get Dan back on the show to do a deep dive into what it's like to dig into GitHub. How do you actually analyze a blockchain and figure out what is going on with it, how it's going on? And yeah, I definitely would love to dive into GitHub and I know Dan's the man that can deliver it for us. So hopefully you'd like to see Dan back on the show. Drop a comment below. Actually tweet and tag him on Twitter. Tell him we want some uh, GitHub help. Love you guys. Swing over and don't forget to check out Flux's new Zellcore updates. They got some big announcements coming up with Zellcore. So love you guys. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Peace.